So today we are wrapping up our two-week series. It's a very short series on the guiding value of being a lifelong learner. This experience of being committed to curiosity and growth. And so with that in mind, last week we had taken a look at this notion of engaging childlike faith, this experience of living our lives and engaging in the world with wonder and curiosity and awe. And we talked about what the Buddhists call the beginner's mind or seeing as though for the first time, which was quite a generative conversation. We took a lot of time to talk through like, how does this feel difficult to us? And when I'm feeling like I should know the answers, how do we deal with that? And what has that done for us when it comes to our mental health, the whole bit? So thank you for that conversation last week. Today, we want to open by building on this idea that being a lifelong learner can be a source of joy for us. And so last week, we noted briefly that living in this way, it tends to open up feelings of gratitude, the stuff that we open with every week. Often, a byproduct of gratitude is joy, right? One emotion begets another, this feeling of pleasure or this feeling of happiness. We hear in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6 and verse 10 through 11, For the Lord gives wisdom. From the Lord's mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you understanding will guard you. So an interesting thing to note in thinking about this kind of a passage is that life really gives us quite a few choices. For instance, if we take learning as an example, some of us, we really enjoy reading, like the actual physical experience of reading. I'm in school right now getting my doctorate for spiritual direction. So I love getting that physical book, curling up in a chair, you know, even highlighting and marking the thing up, the whole deal. But others really love audiobooks. It's become a part of their life. I haven't done as much with them, but a lot of people really love them. Other people still tell me that they really enjoy learning in groups. They find that more satisfying. And so hearing these different types of testimony, it makes sense because some of us are visual learners, others do better by hearing information, and others still, they kind of want to physically embody the thing that they're engaging with in order to really learn it. And of course, combinations of things are possible too. And so when we engage with a passage like Proverbs 2, what we hear is that God can teach us things about ourselves. We can learn exactly what it is that makes us tick and, and what helps us. We can unlock knowledge and understanding and ways of being that might be outside of what we've been offered in the past, right? Maybe nobody offered us an audiobook. Like how many years of our lives went on before we even knew that that was a way that we like to learn. But those ways might really work for us. I was with a friend not so long ago and that friend has been retired for a couple of years. So they've been at this learning business for a while. And we had just heard a talk together on the topic of self-esteem. And then after this talk, we had 20 minutes of silence to reflect. And so during my friend's 20 minutes of silence, he had discovered an entirely new way to think about some things in his life that had felt hurtful and damaging for many years and suddenly he had all this new hope and he felt so alive. And so that's very much one of the miracles identified in Proverbs chapter 2 there that living as lifelong learners can help us remember to engage with this divine guide, right? We have this access to all this information and what we're told in verse 10 is that God, he enters our actual hearts, which is such a great comfort that somehow the Holy Spirit living in us, able to teach us and move through us and experience new things, it can open this door to a feeling of spaciousness and joy that it's not all on our shoulders. We're not the ones having to deal with it all. We have help um, in this whole living with awe and wonder and curiosity.
So maybe I'll take a break there for a moment so that we can just chat about that much. What sorts of choices do you make? What have you noticed that helps you engage with learning? And does joy as a byproduct of learning, does that resonate at all? So are there ways that you know of that you learn well? And is it fun for you to learn? Or is there anything else that maybe comes up? So I'd love to hear from you. So having taken some time to think about learning in the context of what is fun for us and the fact that we have all of these choices, we also thought it would be helpful to take some time to talk about the experience of learning by way of what we might sometimes think as failure. And so many of us have probably heard all these clever little statements that you can see here on the screen like, failure is just a data point that leads to the next experiment or FAIL is like an acronym for first attempt in learning. And these are, are great. I use them in my own life. I, I offer them to people when they fit, right? And particularly when things maybe haven't turned out as we had hoped. But I also know that from years of experience that learning through failure is more likely to happen when I feel encouraged and supported and reminded that not seeing things happen as you had hoped doesn't have to be the end. Like it, you kind of need a, a supportive container in order for failure to offer the learning that is possible there. And so I'm reminded of a parable in the New Testament that's come to be known as the parable of the soils. And Jesus ends up needing to explain this parable because everybody is so baffled by it. So in Mark chapter 4, verses 14 through 20, we hear, The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. And as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once they receive it with joy. But since they have no root... They only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, the desires for other things, they come in and they choke the word, making it unfruitful. But others, like seeds sown on good soil, they hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown. And so this is kind of a great example, actually, of if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. In Jesus' explanation of the parable, we hear this, you know, sometimes we just can't hear it that day. Like if we were to kind of boil it all down, we just can't hear it. For whatever reason, we don't have a beginner's mind today. It's not working for us that day, that hearing. It's a total bust. And actually, Richard Rohr talks about this very sort of thing every now and again. You can hear him say, I think he first wrote about it, I first heard about it, in a book called Falling Upward, where he says that the average human can only question 5% of what they believe at any given moment. So sometimes we're going to hear something, and whatever that thing is that was there to learn, it's just quickly snatched away. It doesn't make sense. We can't consider it. It's done. 
And other days, it's a little different. We do learn something and it's amazing. And so initially we're full of excitement and we're ready to make changes and we want to do things with all of that. Today is going to be the day. And then no. Opposition hits and it's all over. Maybe somebody shoots down the idea, you know, that's never going to work because of blah, blah. Or we hear or read something somewhere that tells us this is totally not going to work out. And so that day is not our day either. It is not the day for anything to happen. On yet another day still, once again, we were there. There's some new idea, some new way of being, some new thought process. It's right there. It's ours for the taking. It was going to change our lives forever. And then no. There's worry or stress or unexpected challenges and they swoop in and all of a sudden, it's just we have all to do to keep our heads above water. It's too much that day to do anything with that stuff that we had initially learned. So whatever that we were on the precipice of awakening to, it's just gone. Until one day, we're the perfect kind of soil. The conditions are good and suddenly we flourish and there's this huge harvest in our lives. So it's great, but it took a few times which is where compassion and loving kindness to ourselves can actually be really helpful. We're not always going to get everything right away. We're not going to take it all in and it's not going to change our lives right away. It takes putting ourselves in situations where we can learn and we can grow and kind of doing that for ourselves over and over again. It kind of takes asking ourselves, how am I engaging today? And I want to know. It's kind of allowing ourselves to be in that space. I'm curious. Tell me more. I'm even curious about my failure. Tell me about that too. What can I do differently in the future? What have I learned here? So can we let go of that tendency to judge our failure and kind of trade it in for compassion towards ourselves? Take joy in that experience of journey. And so having said all that, I'd love to open the floor back up for discussion. So can we relate to the struggle of learning by way of failure? Is that actually difficult for us too? Um, is Jesus' explanation of the parable helpful to us? Does it help us to look at it this way? Or is there something else that you wonder about? So I'd love to hear from you.